Heather McDonald is the author of The Diversity Delusion, and she joins us tonight. Heather, thanks very much for coming on. Thank you. So just in the past 24 hours, we've been rethinking this question. We sort of jumped headlong into the mocking of Joe Biden, which was fun, I will say. Mm -hmm. But then I heard Nancy Pelosi say what we just played her saying, which is we really ought to approach other people as if we all have colds and have an arm's length relationship with people we're not related to. What kind of society is she describing? An inhuman one, Tucker, one where there is no forgiveness, there is no acceptance of differences of behavior. We're all supposed to be for diversity, right? How about accepting the diversity of an older generation that has a different style of engagement, that has not been terrorized into uh, frigid self-criticism by the feminist harpies that cannot understand uh, that there are different human beings, there are different ways of relating to people. This is, this is going to end normal human intercourse as we know it, if, if they're allowed to get away with this. These females have all said there was nothing sexual about it. Okay, the conversation should end there. But the new standard now that feminists are setting is they determine by their subjective experience the character of experiences. There's no reasonable person standard. We're certainly not going to accept the male's view that, as Biden said, I had no intention to offend anybody. I was not intending anything sexual. None of that matters now. If a feminist feels offended, then the interaction is objectively offensive. And that is a recipe for chaos and alienation. I think you're exactly right. A recipe for what we have, which is chaos and alienation, in increasingly. So I think a lot of us, me, I'll speak for myself, I looked down at this and there's something amusing about watching the left eat itself. Yes because they have to adhere to their own ludicrous standards. They're living in the PC hell they created for the rest of us. But what's happening to, to Joe Biden is what they plan for the rest of us. Uh huh. And what he plans for everybody else. So when it's hard not to take a certain fiendish glee in this, yes. because it's certainly turnaround is fair play. This is a man who unleashed uh, the war on due process in campus tribunals, who has unleashed every single feminist trope about phantom rape culture for the last three decades who says belief survivors. So it's purely just what he's getting. Nevertheless, I urge you, Tucker, to, to step above pure political vendetta yes. and say, no, what's at stake here is the livability of human society. Young people have to understand old people. People have to be a little flexible. But the, the feminist worldview is brittle. It's intolerant. It's unforgiving. And it's utterly narcissistic. These females are saying... Their worldview, their subjective experience should be now the norm for everybody else, regardless of whether it is objectively reasonable what their, uh, what their interpretation is. So what would you say to non-liberals? Uh, the temptation is always going to be to engage in exactly the behavior that you criticize in others. In other words, you know, they're destroying politicians. Bernie Sanders apparently or maybe leaked this against Joe Biden so now conservatives can become every bit as aggrieved yes. and use the same style. But that is a trap, I think. Absolutely. You have to realize that precedent and principle matters. And the precedent that you're setting will be used against you. Uh, there, there's always changes of power. And, and the ideal for human experience is to live by something that is not sheer partisan uh, vengeance and to set principles that you're happy to live with for yourself and for other people. So again, in this case, as tempting as Biden is as a target, and certainly, you know, he's the strongest contender against Donald Trump, but his real sin is just his own history That's of right. stoking the feminist furies. Again, we should not go down that path because I can guarantee you there's going to be a whole line of Republican politicians who deserve to succeed who are going to have photos taken of them when they've got an arm around right. somebody just simply because they are a physical human being. And I'll tell you the other thing that we can see where this is taking us. Antioch College, which was roundly marked in 1990 for its affirmative consent policy for drunken campus hookups and said every every last grope has to be explicitly agreed to. And everybody said this is crazy. Two decades later, every college has an no, affirmative that's, consent. That's, exa that's exactly Now right. they are applying affirmative consent to platonic touch. Now a daughter objects to her mother hugging her because she didn't get consent. This is where this is going to take us, Tucker. It really is dystopian. It the is. The kind of sterile world it's a that sterile they're imposing world. on us.
of Heather McDonald, I can't think of anyone who could have explained that better than you just did. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tucker.